day you had a lot of calls. Were you ever really close to anything happening today? I don't think so. I mean, when I say that, you never know. And when I talked to a lot of general managers, and it was, of course, you talk to fewer and fewer as the time goes on because you start to siphon that down. When early afternoon, there were a lot of people that were very disheartened that they thought they were close to making a move. And they said they thought they were so close, but they never got there. The people were backing out. So my instincts is that I, we were never really at that point, okay, let's take it to, let's fill in ownership. A um, lot of conversations, thought it could turn another way a couple of times, but just uh, never reached that point. Now you have a reputation over a long time in this business as a guy who gets things done, who addresses needs, who makes moves. Uh, th does it kind of go against your nature to an extent to, to not try to make something happen? Well, I think you have to be careful. Um, a couple points there. People talk about the deadline. Well, we did pick up Andrew Kashner, who I think was a very important acquisition before the deadline, and he's added to our rotation already. So that's that's an addition that is with the club. And then I think you have to be careful not make a deal just to make a deal. You have to make sure that that's the deal that's making you better, and also that you're just not giving up too much and then saying afterwards, well, I wish I didn't give that up, but I got this player. So... Again, I like to do things. I, you try to make your club better. I think we have a talented ball club. We're in a position where it's not that easy in some places to just upgrade. And really the only place everybody keeps talking about is the bullpen. But the reality is we have a really good club, and we like our club. And now we need to go out there as a group and play better and win it all. We've seen a lot of other teams that are in the battle with you for wild card spots making moves, and, and whether it was even the Astros who made a lot of moves. Uh, was, were there any of those deals that you said those guys would have helped us? Anybody that you sort of looked at and said, ah, they went to somebody that uh, we're battling, that's somebody we could have used? Or when you look at it all, in the end, was there not a guy who would have made that difference for this team? No, there were guys that were traded that we would have like to have acquired ourselves and think numerous guys actually we just weren't prepared to pay the price and a lot of times people think well we didn't have what it takes and I would tell you that's not accurate maybe there's a case or two but the reality is we could have acquired a lot of those players if we were willing to give up some of our top guys at this point but there's just a certain group of guys that as we're building our farm sister system back we're extremely cognizant of doing that we like their ability some of them are getting closer i think we're making strides so we were careful of doing those things and you don't want to make a an incremental change of your club now and really we're talking about 55 56 games whatever it is at this point at the expense of six years if you're not sold that that's the difference making move for you and and i think in our case it was careful that we just didn't think that difference making move was out there to trade one of our significant prospects and other organizations felt differently and dave you have traded away prospects over the last couple of years it led to a world series uh, last october uh, because of that does it sort of make you even more careful before moving a prospects as you are now sort of in the process of rebuilding the farm system after trading away some prospects well, I, I, we've been cognizant of that for a few years. I think ever since we made the Chris Sale deal, we sat down at the winter meetings there and said, we're in a position we need to build our system back. We traded a lot of premium prospects before that and included uh, for people like Sale and a person like Kimbrell. So we traded a lot of those, and, and we really focused on doing that. However, if the right move was there, I would still say we would trade prospects. And, of course, there's different degrees of prospects guys who you think have a chance to be quality guys and guys who are fringe people I think we've traded more of those fringe type players over the last few years but would we be open-minded to some other deals sure you, you would be open-minded but I don't think just for a two-month rental for example uh, we would have made that type of move this year and honestly, I mean, you're nine games out of first place right now, a couple games out of the wild card. A year ago, you made a couple of moves. You got Pierce in late June. You got Evaldi maybe a week before the deadline. And that was to add to a first place team that looked like it had an excellent chance of winning it all. How much does your current position in the standings factor in what you would or wouldn't do? Well, it factors in. I, I, we, you still want to win a championship by all means. We want to be in a position where, first of all, we win our division. The odds are not with us, but we're not giving that up by any means. We think we can do that. But realistic, if you were playing the odds, you'd say, well, they're playing for a wild card. That's a one-game wild card spot. If you win that, then you're just like everybody else without the home field advantage. But it does factor in because I think you're in a position where 
if you feel you're going to win your division and play in that five games, that is one where maybe you'll do a little bit different than if you just have that one card, one game wild card. And I think every circumstance is different. I don't necessarily know that you make a 100% determination on that all the time. But in our situation right here, uh, last year we were sitting there and saying, geez, this little piece would make the difference in our mind. This year I think we're in a situation that, to me, little pieces can help, but I also think the difference is the quality of players that we have in our on our club now and them stepping up and being in a position. Some of them are having great years, there's no question about it. But us as a team, we need to step up. And so those little pieces, maybe they're not quite as important. And really we're looking more that, hey, these guys are club. We got some really good players and some of them have played great and others have played fine. But let's go ahead and let's do it together with this group. And one of the strengths of this team coming into the season, certainly on paper, was the starting rotation. I think it's safe to say as a group it has underachieved compared to what the track record is of these guys. Is the belief still there that this group can turn it around and that ultimately whether you added a reliever or whatever, it would have to be those starting pitchers who would have to improve if you're going to go anywhere in October? Well, they're the key to us. I mean, it's a compliment to them, really. I mean, we're built on a club that's built to depend. We have a great offensive team. But really, when we say our ball club, I've said this before the season, so it's not any different than now. Our starting pitching is our strength. We've got some real stars there. And so if we're going to win, we're usually going to jump on their back. And I know it's a lot to be on, to have that on you and your back, but look what they did for us in the postseason last year. I mean, that's the type of pitchers we think that they are. They have all everything they possibly can. They work as hard as you possibly can. They do everything they can. They feel that pressure. They want to do it. They're those type of guys. That's why I feel comfortable talking about it because they're stand-up type guys, and I think it's great. And our really our success starts there. And everybody else has to play, and you have to play fine. You have to do the fundamentals well. You have to get runners over. You have to get runners in. What we were talking about last year at the same time, we were third in Major League Baseball in innings pitched by our starters. This year we're 17th. That makes a difference in our ball club. And, yes, we think they're very good. I still think they're going to have a real good second half. And I think the most important part of that is is that they're healthy. And if they're healthy, um, they'll lead us, and we'll be looking at them, and we'll be thanking them as we go on. All right, Dave, I'll ask you finally. Uh, some reaction today is that the Red Sox don't believe they can win it all, and that's why you didn't make any moves today. Do you still have the belief in this group that it could put together a strong two months and make a run in October? Oh, for sure. I, I don't think there's any question. This club's good enough. And, and I heard that. Somebody said that. And the way I would answer that question to you, which is a very easy answer, is that if we did not believe that, if I did not believe that, you would trade players away. You'd be in a position where you wouldn't try to go for it to win. And there would have been ample interest in a lot of our guys who are free agents in a couple of months. And so people that are on expiring contracts, those type of players move all the time at this time of year if you're in a position where you don't think you can win. But we kept our group together because we think we can win with this team. All right, Dave, we appreciate it. It's been a busy day. We uh, thank you for coming on. Thanks. Thanks for having me.